Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the C Morning Show right here on C Today. We mark the first talk show of the day, and we are bringing also an update and in regards to something that is very unfortunate that happened right here in the nation, especially from the pageantry world. Now, as we know, I mean, we have a lot of our friends also who is, you know, joined the pageantry before and not in this particular um, pageantry as we're speaking right now. But we know that uh, pageantry is, uh, or beauty pageant, is actually a pedestal or as a medium for female, for women to showcase uh, what is their you know, purposes in life, what their ideas and how they can change this world into a better place. Now, in regards to the recent or recent matter, the Jakarta police again questioned seven Miss Universe Indonesia finalists on Monday over sexual harassment allegations at the beauty pageant. Now, officers sought um, the details on the allegations that the finalists were told to strip behind the scenes for judging by organizers, which is not part of the schedule. Apart from having photos taken, the finalists claimed that the organizers also verbally abused and intimidated them. In addition, officers excuse me, also questioned two other witnesses, where Jakarta Police spokesperson Senior Commissioner Truno Yodo Andiko later told reporters that they are now currently still gathering evidence before treating the investigation as a criminal. He also revealed that digital forensic experts are being involved in this case. Polda Metro Jaya sudah melakukan langkah-langkah proses penyelidikan. Sebagaimana kami sampaikan, langkah proses penyelidikan yang awal ya tentu kita menganalisa dari bukti-bukti berupa penyelidikan pada saat klarifikasi. Dari proses klarifikasi ini kemudian kita lakukan analisa, maka didapatkanlah lokus dan tempus delikti. Di mana dan kapan suatu peristiwa dugaan kekerasan seksual ini terjadi. Ya. Untuk langkah berikutnya, penyelidik juga sudah mendatangi ke tempat kejadian perkara ya, tentu untuk dalam proses penyelidikan. Dalam proses ini ada satu hal yang menjadi catatan penyidik kemarin sudah disampaikan oleh Bapak Direktur akan melakukan langkah-langkah secara forensik dalam hal ini adalah digital forensik ya tentunya karena di tempat kejadian tersebut yang dilaporkan dan patut diduga pada kejadiannya adalah satu sekitar satu Agustus 2023 ini terkait dengan CCTV. Alright, and today let's explore the intricate psychological effects of sexual harassment, unraveling its impact on mental well-being and also relationships. And joining us today to offer her insights is psychologist Rika Kristina. Hello, Rika. Thank you for Hello. coming. Thank you for being here. Thank you. All right. Now, um, we want to start with the definition of sexual harassment. Maybe you can um, share to us um, what is the true definition of uh, sexual harassment and how does it differ from other forms of, um, you know, inappropriate uh, behavior? Okay, so for the definition of sexual harassment itself is a sexual activity or unwanted sexual behavior that happened without consent. Mm, okay. And for the purpose to intimidate, to humiliate, or to insult the victim. Mm. So I guess there are three key words. It's done without consent. Okay. It's a sexual activity or sexual behavior and to insult or to intimidate or do harm to the victim. Right. And that's already, you define that as a sexual harassment. Yeah. All yeah. right. Now, if we're going back to this case, we know that the survivors um, did not immediately re uh, react or report it. They've, yeah. you know, they've done the final night and then they report this. What really comes, take us through for those survivors when they got this kind of an unexcused behavior mm. from other parties, how might they be feeling at that time and why didn't they immediately report this, especially to the authorities? Okay, because there are several uh, reaction or emotions f uh, that comes first uh, before they realize I should report what happened to me. Right. The first one is uh, they usually feel shocked. Mm. Yeah. They are still processing, is this really happened to me? Okay. Mm -mm. Is this really uh, the fact that what I'm going through? So they feel shocked and didn't really realize 
what is going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The second one, they might also feel uh, angry. And when you feel really angry, it's hard for you to think clearly. Right. And yeah. you you can um, yeah make a strategy like, okay, I should report to the police because right. you still feel a lot of tense, tense uh, emotions in right. your body. Yeah, you feel angry. And the third one, I guess, you can also feel some sort of denial. Oh, that, that didn't happen to me. Yeah, um, I guess this is not really what happened to me. Right. Yeah, yeah. I don't believe that he did that or right. she did that. Or uh, especially when the case has uh, happened between two parties that have a close relationship. Right. Mm. It's easier for us to deny what right. really happened. Is it like for them to process? Is yeah. this really happening? Because I trust that person, let's say. Yeah. So why does this happen to me? Yeah. We we have a good relationship, but why you did that? It's right. it's hard for us to accept, right? Yes. Yeah. And it's um yeah, it's post it, it will postpone our reaction to report to. Yes. Yeah. And I guess the the last one, we can also feel numb, numbing. Mm. Yeah. Right where we cannot feel any specific emotions, we cannot think clearly, and we don't know what to do because, yeah, we feel numbed. Uh, maybe this is the mixed emotions between shock, angry, yeah, right. yeah. So, yeah, it's the emotions that are going on into in this person is a lot and they need to process it. Now, yeah. I want to know because this happened in a group of people, you know, what happened when, when, you know, when sexual harassment is done to a group of people? Did they um, experience the same kind of shock or is it, is it different from everyone? It, I, I don't know how to say this because I think it took some time to realize that what they did to us is not right for them, right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I don't know, how to process it? How do you put this? Um, actually, uh, it depends on uh, which group. Mm. But um, let's say I realized this has really happened to me and you also realized, but it, uh, it, we can also uh, feel afraid to report because maybe there are uh, power status, yes. social status, or we are afraid that if we uh, go public, uh, our image will, yeah. Yeah, and it's the start of their career, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So with that, with that said, uh, you were also already mentioning the the intense kind of emotion that happened mm -hmm. to them right away. What is the short term kind of emotion, and how they dwell? Mm -hmm to those feelings because we've also heard some reports and we read reports one of them are they can't sleep well they yeah. can't eat well some really can't just have like this anxiety and headaches how is this like a short term would this be a long term do they need to seek a professional for them to feel better again okay so for the short term it's true that we might feel a high intensity of anxious mm -hmm. anxiousness we can also feel really uh, scared yeah. because of what happened to us. And we can feel um, unhappy, hopeless, helpless. Right. And also uh, poor concentration. It's hard for us to sleep, to eat well. It really can happen to the victim yeah. of the sexual harassment. Yeah. And for the professional help, uh, yes, I guess it's really needed. Don't don't take it too long. Don't wait until the long term effects mm. um, attack us. Yeah. yeah, because it's uh, yeah, if the damage is uh, harder, so the treatment will also get longer. Right. Well, right? What would be the long term uh, kind of effect? Because yeah. some people would say, oh, this is just something you shouldn't take it to your heart. Yeah. Yeah. This is yeah. the procedures yeah. and whatnot. Especially in modeling world. Exactly, and in that pageantry and not world. True. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So what would be the long-term cause okay. for these survivors? People need to know and yeah. understand. Yeah, we, we should take this seriously, even if the society might say to you, uh, you are really serious. Uh, it, it, it's only a joke why you take it so serious. But actually, uh, sexual harassment can lead to a long-term effects such as uh, clinical disorders, mm. like we know depression, right. 
anxiety disorder or post traumatic stress disorder or uh, PTSD. Yeah. It's a clinical disorder that really serious and uh, some of the victims need a medical treatment. Right. Wow. Yeah, because they can't go to work, they can't sleep and might um, disturb their relationship with their family maybe. Yes, and loved ones too. Yeah. Definitely disrupt the function of their lives. Yeah, that's prior. Yeah. you know that sexual harassment. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now um, we also want to know because um, I remember I interviewed um, someone from around 2020, and mm -hmm. um, she said that the data from Indonesia is um, uh, most of the victims are actually men, and it goes. Um, uh, unnoticed by um, by all mm -hmm. by by the Indonesian society. Now I want to know: Are there any difference in how men and women um, experiencing sexual harassment, and what are the uh, you know what are the things that they're um, experiencing, and how to cope with the psychological effect uh, from the sexual harassment? Okay, so the differences between men uh, victims and women yes. victims. For the number, yes, um, it's undeniable that women experience sexual harassment more than men. Mm. But it doesn't mean that men cannot experience it. Yes. There's a lot, but men um, tend, to, tend to deny it more. Yeah. Because yeah. what of the toxic masculinity? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. If I say or if I report, the society might uh, thought that I'm a weak one. Yeah. yeah. Or how about my career? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we know the the man is usually the head of the family. Right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the number, yes, uh, it is more on women, but men also experience uh, sexual harassment, and the data show that one from ten men. Mm -hmm experience sexual harassment in a public place. Wow. Okay. One from ten. Yes. It's, it's, it's much, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so how they feel the emotions typically don't have a different um, response from women, but how they cope, they have a different one where men tend to shut up more yes. yeah, because of the toxic masculinity rather than women because we think that women should be more protected. Right. Yeah. It is our nature to be yeah. treated that way. Yeah. yeah. So for men survivors, do you think it's more damage for them, especially if they come across these kind of harassment? It could, yeah. It could be because uh, how the society treat them mm -hmm. is not, it's not safe enough, I think. Yeah, you're not yeah, opening right enough yeah. like for these survivors. They, they couldn't be vulnerable as vulnerable. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. And I think the society also playing a part on this. I think yeah. uh, in regards to, you know, these kind of circumstances, there's also that kind of, um, that society that plays a role thinking that, you know, this is so very taboo, mm -hmm. it should not be outspoken. Yeah. And then they will kind of look at the victims or the, the survivors, excuse me, and they'll be like saying, well, why do you want to do it? If yeah. you're not, you should say no, right? Mm. So what can the uh, behavior of the society, how can we change our behavior, especially in the society form, then so mm. then we can get, uh, give the safe haven to the survivors? Okay, the first one, victims are victims. Mm -hmm. Because usually the society blame the victims. Exactly, mm. yes. Even if we know something bad happened to them, we still... Um, tend to give a comment like, how could that happen? Maybe you wear something that is too open. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe uh, you, yeah, you let them yes. did that to you. But remember the first one, victims are victims. Mm -hmm. yeah. And victims should be protected. Yes. The second one is we can be a good listener. Yeah. That is that is uh, something hard for them to process to accept. Yeah, and they need an ear to listen. That's, yeah, that's right. Yeah? If we can really be there and listen to them, maybe it can decrease their uh, emotions. Yeah, yeah, their negative emotions, yes. and we can prevent them.
from the clinical uh, disorder itself, yeah. the long-term yeah. effects, yeah. right? And I just think also what we need to do, you were saying a great thing that we have to listen and not make any judgment. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then we have course. to focus on the objective too. Sometimes we'll try to tend to find other factors yeah. that is subjective as opposed to the objective that they yeah. are victims. Like you said, they're victims, they will always be victims. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Don't, don't uh, blame other factors, yes. right? Because uh, yeah, sexual harassment is wrong and yeah. yeah, we should focus to the behavior itself. Okay, now on my last question, uh, Marika, um, if we see something is happening mm -hmm. um, right in front of our eyes, be it to our friend or ourselves, mm -hmm. what should we do? Maybe you can walk us through maybe three steps mm -hmm. that we need to do. Okay, the first one, um, just uh, know and be mindful with your emotions first. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's okay to feel angry, it's okay to feel numb. And uh, it's okay too if you need some minutes to process it because it's not something that is easy to be processed about. Yeah. The second one, if you already feel calmer, you can think what should I do next? Mm -hmm. Maybe if, I, if you have a, lo uh, a panic attack, let's say you can take a deep breath and then you can say, I hate it when you did this to me. Right. Okay. We should uh, make boundaries, a clear boundaries, and we can state that that we don't like that kind of behavior. Mm. So speak it directly. We have to speak up for ourselves. Validate ourself. your feelings. Yep. And the third one, if you really need help, please seek one. Right. You can seek a professional help or get a support system. Right. Just go to uh, someone or uh, yeah, a group of people that you really trust and that uh, yeah, you think that they can help you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's hard for us to uh, walk alone in this of course. situation. Of course. Marika, Christina, thank you very thank much you. for your time to elaborate on this and this matter, especially and hopefully we can be our lending ear and shoulders to all the victims and survivors. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, everyone, we're taking another short break right now, but we'll return Ralphie and I will have another discussion about the air pollution and the effect on children's health. Right here on our show, don't go anywhere.